Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about whether you should leave your estranged child one dollar. Okay, I have worked with a lot of families over the last 29 years, helping them get and keep their legal affairs in order, and some of the families I've worked with are just in incredible. The relationships are great. Parents support all of the children. Parents, of course, love all the children. You see that in, in most families. Children support the parents. As the parents get older, all of the children chip in to help the parents. Children support each other. And there's not a chance there's going to be any kind of silliness or argument or anything like that because, you know, it's just the Oh, the, the leave it to beaver type family. Now, that's not common. In fact, we have a joke around our office um, where sometimes I say, geez, for 29 years I've been, I've been waiting to find a, a normal family and I haven't found one yet. Because not every family is perfect and, and far from it. Um, and so sometimes, you know, there's, there's relationship issues between the parents and the children, the children and, you know, and other siblings. And so um, sometimes it just becomes necessary for the parents to make a decision to exclude or significantly limit what one of their children might say, might get. So some people tell me, you know, when they come in to talk about it, they say, well, Mr. Rabelais, um, I heard that you shouldn't totally exclude a child. You should leave them a dollar because if you just totally exclude them, they could contest it. So that's, that's, you know, I've heard that many, many times. All right, so let's lay it out and go over what the options are when that's the case and kind of lay out what, what makes the most sense. Before we do that, I do want to encourage you to punch the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you won't miss anything. And then share with other people who may have an interest. There's a little share arrow you can share. And then just tune in every morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. New information to help you protect your estate. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say the parents have three kids. Um, let's call them, let's let all of their names start with the letter E. They have three kids, Edward, Emily, and to make it simple, the third child is called estranged. I, wouldn't, I hope a parent never calls their child estranged, but for purposes of our example, that's what I'm going to call child number three. And, you know, the parents come in and they say, Paul, we've tried and tried and tried and we're at our limit. You know, our, our son, his name is estranged. He just flat out will not communicate with us. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's his wife. Maybe we did something that, you know, that bothered him so much that he doesn't want to talk to us anymore, but he, he doesn't take our calls. He doesn't take our texts. We send him a birthday card. Um, and he just flat out, you know, he won't respond. So it's, it's come to a point where we feel like we've got to exclude him. And then they'll go on to say, they'll probably say one of two things. They'll say, um, we just feel like we need to leave our estate to Edward and Emily 50-50. Or sometimes they'll say, we feel like we still want to leave it in thirds with a third to Edward and a third to Emily but the part that would have gone to estranged if we had a relationship with him, we want that to go to his children. His children are now adults and uh, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd like to see them have it. And so then they ask, you know, should we, should we leave estranged a dollar? I heard that's what you're supposed to do when you don't wanna leave them anything. All right, so let me go through the different you know, scenarios or examples that you have and, and what would be appropriate in circumstances like that. So let so so maybe um, one of the options would be to structure your estate planning legal documents, whether that's your will or your living trust, to say that I leave estranged one dollar and I leave every you know my, I leave the rest of my estate to Edward and Emily 50-50. So that's one option. I don't really like that option because when you die and um, Emily and Edward are trying to complete your, your probate or settle your estate, uh, especially if they're having to complete a probate, um, if the judge who is overseeing the probate does his or her job, they're gonna wanna make sure that all of the specific bequests have been satisfied 
before everything goes to, let's call them the residuary heirs, the people who get the rest of the estate, Edward and Emily. So a judge might say, I'm not going to allow anything to go to Edward and Emily until I get you know, a signed acknowledgement from Edward where he acknowledges that he's received his $1 or his $10 or his $100, whatever, whatever it might have been. And so what happens then is Edward and Emily, you know, they, as, as part of trying to settle their parents' probate, they, they give Estranged a call and say, hey, Estranged, how you doing? Oh, look, we're trying to settle mom and dad's estate, and, and you know what? They left you a dollar, and they left us everything else. And so we just need to get you to sign some, some probate paperwork so we can get mom and dad's estate settled. How about I send that paperwork over and you can take it to a, you know, a notary or, or a lawyer and you know, get your signature notarized, get that back to us, and then we can complete the probate proceeding. And at that point, Estranged is probably gonna say something like, well, I'll tell you what, um, Edward and Emily, let me tell you what you can do with your paperwork. And it'll go from there. And then the probate, doesn't get completed either ever or until more court hearings are necessary to attempt to, you know, haul estranged into court to, you know, to, to have, a, have him explain why he hasn't signed the paperwork to a judge. So just complete mess. Even relationships get worse than they already were. So I, I like to, you know, instead of leaving them a dollar, leave them out. And that way they're not involved in your probate. Now, when, now there's a, a second way you could do this. You could, in your estate planning legal documents, just say, I leave everything to Edward and Emily, 50-50. Don't even mention estranged. And so I, I think that, that would, would work. And some people or some lawyers might say, well, if you, if you don't even mention that estranged e exists, Maybe a judge will interpret that as, you know, you forgot to include him. And so maybe a judge would, would give estranged, you know, his one third, which that logic doesn't really make sense to me. But uh, I've, I've seen that, you know, out there or that's been proposed. So maybe another option is say, I, in your estate planning legal documents, will, living trust, whatever, I leave everything 50-50 to uh, Edward and Emily and then add a provision. I'm intentionally excluding estranged. And maybe you leave it at that, or maybe even you say why you're intentionally excluding estranged, um, which wouldn't matter if you gave that reason or not, pending some forced airship discussion that I'll talk about here in a minute. So those, those are the options. Uh, I don't really like leaving them a token amount because that includes them in your probate. I, I like keeping it simple and just leave your stuff to whoever you want to leave it to. But if you want to add another provision where you're you know, actively making a provision that says you're intentionally excluding someone, I really don't have any issues with that. Now, when we talk about excluding someone, particularly here in my state of Louisiana, where I work as an estate planning lawyer, really can't finish that discussion without having a discussion about Louisiana's forced airship rules. And our rules are unlike any other states when it comes to this children, some children are automatically entitled to inherit from their parents. So let me just go through that Louisiana stuff real quick. Not going to be applicable to you if you live in another state because Louisiana is really the only state to my knowledge that has these forced airship provisions. So if your child is, if estranged is a forced heir, he's going to be entitled to a lot more than a dollar. But is he a forced heir? And let's talk about what a forced heir is. A forced heir is a child, uh, is a children, a child of yours who, when you die, is age 23 or younger, or a child of any age who, at the time of your death, is permanently incapable of taking care of their persons or administering their estates. And there's a body of law on that. But if estranged was considered to be a forced heir, then estranged would be entitled to, if you have one forced heir, they're, in, they're entitled to um, one fourth of the estate. So, you know, they'd be entitled to a fourth and then uh, the other two would split three fourths. But can't finish the discussion here about forced heirship. About even if, if estranged is by definition a forced heir, I've been talking all along about how estranged won't contact his parents. So there are some uh, eight exceptions to the forced airship rules where 
even if by definition they're a forced heir, if they, if they do one of these eight things, then the parent can expressly disinherit them in their estate planning documents. So, you know, some of those things we rarely, if ever, use, or we hope to rarely, if ever, use them. Some of the reasons whereby a parent can disinherit an heir or a child, child has raised his hand to strike a parent or has actually struck a parent, but a mere threat is not sufficient. The child has been guilty towards a parent of cruel treatment, crime, or grievous injury. The child has attempted to take the life of a parent. I think that would be a pretty good reason to disinherit a child. Goes on, but the one that's used most often uh, where parent, a parent may have a forced heir, but they want to disinherit that forced heir, they, the parent can rely on the exception that says, if the child, after the child turns 18, and knowing how to contact the parent has failed to communicate with the parent without just cause for two years. So then the parent can say, you know, even if estranged is a forced heir, I'm expressly disinheriting estranged for this reason. And as long as it's one of those eight reasons, estranged isn't gonna be entitled to anything. All right, so I've got more videos on forced heirship. You can ask YouTube or Google to you know, do a search and find out more about that. So bottom line though is don't, uh, in, in, unless there's some compelling reason, don't leave a token amount in your will to someone who's estranged and, and you wanna try to kind of rub it in because you're just gonna leave them a token amount. It'll, it will likely make things more difficult for the survivors that you do care about because if you leave them a token amount, it may, it may mean that they, they are going to be involved in your probate. Probate is hard enough, and then when you have one who's uncooperative, it's just, you know, all bets are off. So uh, I hope that helps. Again, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. You don't miss anything. Having a good time uh, making these videos and getting them published every morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, thumbs up would be really phenomenal. Uh, that way YouTube will share all this information with other people. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Y'all take care.